Hello you bearded bastards and welcome back once again to Tar N, the land of legends. Where if you remember, I'm sure you do. We have a tiny kobold who's in a bit of a sticky situation. That's right, just at the end of last episode, Tuko ran into a pack of wolves and was chased up into this tree after being injured fairly severely actually. Well, worse than she has been anyways. A whole bunch of bruising and several large cuts as well to her feet, her body, her legs. Ooh, a bruised tendon in her skull. That's gotta hurt, but none of it should be life-threatening, hopefully. Uh, anyways, yes, Tuko's up in this tree now, and our beetle friend, Samir, is uh, down here somewhere. I'm not too sure where exactly. All I do know is that there are wolves out there somewhere, which is a bit terrifying. Um, well, you know, I guess the best thing we could do is just wait and see if they leave. If it was approaching nighttime, we'd be in some serious trouble because we do not want to be out here at nighttime, but it's still fairly early in the morning, so we are in luck. And so we'll just wait a bit. Unfortunately, you can't pass time quickly when you're up in a tree like this. And so, well, let's just wait till those wolves are out of sight anyways. Time is passing right now, even though it doesn't look like much is going on. Having a look down at the forest floor and well, not seeing much out there. We might be good, in case you were wondering, down here to the southwest there's these purple W's, and those are just a couple of locations that I last saw wolves in. They're probably not there anymore though, hopefully. Well, let's have a look, what do you think? Alright, gonna head down, slowly now, just bit by bit. Okay, we are on the ground, gonna take this time to smell the air, just to see if I can pick up anything. <laughs> Barn owl. I don't smell any wolves, that's a good sign. And so, I'm going to start sneaking and creeping, and I'm also going to lay on the ground, and we're going to take things very slowly. Oh, oh, okay, there is a wolf over there. Never mind. Hopefully it hasn't seen me. All right, and it has not, thankfully. Uh, I am going to tell you what. I'm going to head up to the north here. Oh, okay, that's a, a smelly barn owl over that way. No worries. Yeah, heading north. Just up here a bit, behind these trees, and I'm going to wait here, just for an hour. Okay, been waiting here an hour now, and once again I'm going to start sneaking, while also laying on the ground. We have a kawadi up over this way, delicious, no threat though. Anyways, heading back down, slowly. Oh, a smelly barn owl, of course. Nothing to worry about, still going, I can see down to the south my little pile of junk. No wolves. Almost there. And we're here. Hey, how's it going, Samir? I did not leave you. Okay, there we go. Grabbing all my crap. Still no sign of those wolves. They must have moved on. Certainly hoping, anyways. All right, now let me just check, make sure I got all my stuff. And yeah. Okay, we're all set. Let's go, Samir. Time to get the hell out of here. Looks like we've discovered a river. A very common occurrence. But you know, I'm thinking this would be an excellent time to wash off some of this filth. Gotta get these wounds cleaned out. Don't want to risk infection. And this is better than nothing. Alright, let's see. Hoping this is doing the trick. Not too sure though. The water really isn't that deep. Uh, these pools over here are a little deeper. It's stagnant water, but I really feel like we should get these wounds cleaned out. Uh, here. I'm gonna head downstream a little bit, and we'll see if this river gets any deeper. We still do have plenty of time in this day. Oh, okay. All right. That was a little terrifying. I don't know if you caught that right there, but um, as I approached this deeper section of river, I fell into the water. Uh, I don't really know how, but Tuco just went straight in, and it took some doing to get back out. A lot of floundering in the water, which is usually what happens right before you drown. In fact, you can see her now laying on the ground, winded. She was quickly running out of oxygen. Checking my inventory. Looks like Samir's doing fine. <laughs> Yeah, just hang in there, buddy. Just a little water. Not too bad, right? Right, well, that should have cleaned us off good enough, I'm hoping. But I was hoping to get a little bit more swimming skill, too. Which is always a dicey prospect. Not one that I care for that much, but it could come in handy. And so now that we're cleaned off with some proper running water, I'm gonna head over to these murky pools, just over this way here. And we're gonna practice swimming in one of these. Right here, actually. Just in this tiny little pool right here. It should be easy to get back out. The water's not moving anywhere. And as I just said, it could really help us out in the future. 
Let's have a go. Just gonna come back here, drop all my stuff on the ground, everything. And let's just uh, take this slowly. Okay, we're in the water. Floundering once again. But we're out. That was terrifying, but it worked out pretty okay. <laughs> just gonna have to do that a couple more times. Okay, all right, there we go. Just a little dip right there, nothing too bad. Just gonna keep going like this. Just tiny little touches into the water. Gotta take it slowly. Don't wanna be risky. I will admit to panicking quite a bit when that happens. <laughs> like, in real life, not just in the game. Right now we're a dabbling swimmer, but the skill is improving. And I think after we're a novice swimmer, things will get a lot more reliable. And so we're just gonna keep doing this. It shouldn't take long. I'll be right back. Wish us luck. Uh, okay. You may notice that things have gotten a little bit darker, and I guess that's because it's nighttime now. Apparently I wasn't keeping very good track of time. And so I just grabbed up all my stuff and I'm kind of panicking right now because we have to get to civilization. This is extremely, extremely dangerous. So let's get moving right away. In case you were wondering, swimming went well for the most part. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Anyways, running in terror. Okay, we're safe. Luckily, this elven forest retreat was not that far away from where we were. And so we quickly traveled over here and ended up spending the night. Right now it is morning. And you can see we've made a little campfire here, right beneath the branches of this enormous willow tree. Yeah, the thing is pretty darn big. And its name is Massive Vine, which I thought was pretty cool. But just a side note, really. Anyways, back down here at our campfire. And I'm gonna pull up the map real quick. Now remember, our goal now is to head over here to the southeast, into Dwarven territory. We're going to have to head over the Beak of Land, which I'm not too thrilled at, but assuming everything goes well, it shouldn't take any more than, uh, I don't know, two or three days, which yeah, sounds very bad. Not too thrilled about it, but we have no other option. And so, let's get to it, Samir. I know I've said it before, but this time we do have an extremely long journey ahead of us. Let's try to get as much done today as we can. All right, Samir, looks like we're here. The beak of land. Noticing there are less and less trees and the land is becoming more hostile. We could see them now off to the east, stretching off to the north and south. The quartzite spires reaching very high into the sky. Certainly a bit, uh, <laughs> overwhelming. Now, I don't think we're going to be stopping very much once we get to the mountains. In fact, I plan on traveling straight through the night. I think we're going to have to. It's going to be very dangerous there. And if things come down to it and we have to end up running for some reason, then I'm probably going to end up dumping everything we have, even the artifacts. But Tuco's greedy, but not stupid. Not that stupid. Anyways, just gotta hope things go well. There's no telling what we could run into up on those slopes. <laughs> oh, uh, gonna have a step back here. Not too sure what that was, but I have an idea. Yep, yeah, we could smell it. A Yeti. Not good news. Gonna have to avoid that thing. It could give us some real trouble. The thing's a bit bigger than a troll, still very unintelligent, but could easily smash little Tuco into a pulp. Not anything I really want to deal with today. And that gives us an idea of what we can expect to run into up here on these mountains. But hold up, is that another one? Oh, you better believe it is. You kidding me? Yeah, let's give those things a wide berth. <laughs> that bad feeling is increasing. Oh my gosh, is that another one? Three Yetis already, we've, we just got to the mountain. Oh, that is, that's really bad. That is really, really bad. Like seriously. The worst thing is, is that when you're approaching slopes, you can't see above you immediately. And so we're gonna have to really keep those peepers peeled. Maybe stopping and smelling the wind every once in a while can give us an idea of what to expect. And, oh, I can smell Yeti again. This is getting ridiculous. I don't know where this one is. Oh, just got up here and I could see two, one up to my north and one down to myself. I thought these things were supposed to be rare. Apparently not. Yikes, yeah, I don't like much of this. Let's keep moving, Samir. Oh boy, there's another one up there.
Oh, okay, that one spotted me. It's heading right in. Uh, dumping everything, pulling out my crossbow, sprinting. Now let's go. Okay, all right, this thing is seemingly pretty fast. Just gotta get a little lead here. I'll be back, Samir, don't worry. All right, not looking bad right now. A little tired though, taking a shot. That was a miss. Um, all right, so now we're tired. I can't continue running. Screw it, taking a shot. Oh my God, I missed again. I guess Tuco doesn't perform very well under pressure. Okay, um, gonna jump. Jumped away, doing it again. And again, hopping away like an idiot. All right, this seems to be working, this uh, strange hopping maneuver, as ridiculous as it may seem. So I'm just gonna do this a little bit here, and maybe I could just like get behind this ridge, and then like, uh, okay, all right, all right. May have gotten away, and I did. Fantastic. Just gonna take a little breather right here, just real quick. I can still smell the unpleasant stink of Yeti, but we are alive. Or, damn it. Ugh. Samir. I left him back there, as well as everything else. All of our food, water. Oh my gosh, okay. Gonna have to go back, I guess. Oh, there's another Yeti up here. That's a different one, too. Just kind of hope it didn't see me. Okay, I just started creeping and sneaking. There's another Yeti up there to the north. What the hell is going on with this place? Just monstrous. Just trying to remember where the hell we came from. Oh, okay, there we are. Okay, here's all my stuff, which I'll pick up. Hey, Samir, how's it going? Doing good? And now I'm going to turn around and continue on this way. What a hellhole this place is. I can't even believe how many Yeti there are. We've only just barely scratched the surface of this mountain, too. If I have to creep the entire way, it's going to take forever to get to safety. Still smelling Yeti, by the way. Unfortunately, I think the best option is to creep the entire way, though. As slow as it's going to be. I don't really want to be rendered into pulp by one of those big bastards. It would not be a great end to this journey. Okay, a little bit of time has passed, and as you could tell, it is nighttime right now. Not anything I'm happy about, to be sure, but we're safe. And the good news is that the Yetis seem to be kind of relegated to the lower slopes. Right now, we're about halfway over the mountains, and I stopped seeing them, thankfully. Although I have been seeing a lot more giant great horned owls, which is not fantastic. I imagine Tuco looks like a little snack to them, but they haven't given me any trouble yet. We just managed to reach this river here, which is great because we are a bit thirsty, but uh, we have to cross it. And I really didn't get my swimming skill that high up before. Right now I'm a novice swimmer, and I don't think that's much better than it was before. Not enough to safely swim across anyways. So I think I'm gonna have to jump for it. Uh, but before I do, I'm just gonna have a quick look at the map. And well, if you take a look here, I actually traveled a lot farther than I thought I had at this point. We started out here in Blaze Scribe. And so I imagine if we keep on traveling at this pace, we should reach this Dwarven Fortress down here by the end of tomorrow, right? I'm just gonna have to hope they're friendly. They're Dwarves, so I'm sure they will be, but I guess there's no telling for sure. Anyways, this jump. <sighs> okay, first off, we're gonna move up here just a bit because I don't know if you saw it, there was a giant waterfall down there. I don't imagine being swept over would be a great thing. Now we'll move back a little bit, begin sprinting, and here goes nothing. And uh, I thought that jump would have been better. Still not that great. I am still pretty uh, terribly over encumbered. Maybe I could throw some stuff over, like this iron crown. Okay, that made it. Well, how about this sword? Okay, that's over there. Um, our food. Yeah, okay, that's over there too. I guess I'm gonna try to throw over Samir's pouch as well. Just if it goes in the water, I don't know what the hell it'd end up doing. <sighs> Let's give it a try. Okay, it's over there, safe. Sorry, Samir. Just a second. And I'll throw over my crossbow. And I imagine that should just about do it. Let's give it another try. Here we go. <sighs> I don't know. It's still not that good of a jump. Maybe, um, actually... <laughs> I know this is taking a bit, but it's risky. Worth a watch. <sighs> I'm gonna try up here, actually. Might be better. All right, let's do it. Okay, we did it. We're good. Fantastic. I'm gonna pick up my crap and continue on our way. What? Hold up a damn second. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> so stupid. Okay, it's a brook. It's not even deep at all. What a waste of time. Okay. Anyways, let's continue on, shall we? Okay. It looks like we made it through the night. Oh my gosh. Only to be killed now? Time will tell. I was just going to say, I've been smelling Yeti all over the place, but have not spotted any. But here we are, just ran into another pair. <sighs> okay, well, jumping seemed to work well last time. Gonna be sprinting too. Just up over here. If I can break visual contact, it might make things a bit easier. All right, um, I just stopped sprinting. I think I lost the thing, although I can still smell Yeti. But I have begun sneaking. Ugh, there's another one right over there. Down off the side of the slope. This is ridiculous. All right, so noted. The lower slopes of the Beak of Land are infested with Yetis. Yikes, huh? Anyways, as I was going to say, it is the next morning and we did survive through the night. And I believe we're approaching the end of our journey. Or rather, to be more precise, the midpoint of our journey. Remember, these Dwarven Lands are only intended to be a brief stopover, but a much appreciated and well-deserved stopover to be sure. I'm just hoping they're not hostile, because if they are, then this journey just got a lot more difficult. All right, we are now approaching a Dwarven settlement, from the looks of it anyways. Not too sure what their deal is, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. We could see the large white walls of a fortress and the path leading in. Okay, bunch of junk strewn about the place. Hmm, we'll have to keep our eyes open. Maybe we could pick up some good gear here. Who's to say? There's a Crundle uh, running around the courtyard here, panicking, of course. All right, having a bad feeling here. I'm approaching the main gate and it appears to be closed. And having a look over to the northwest, we can see a bunch of mm, corpses, a lot of blood, a lot of gore. Yeah, getting a real bad feeling about this. Well, I suppose if there's no way to get into the fortress, then there's not much we can do. Really stinks, but I don't know, maybe we could stay here for the night or something. It's gotta be safer than staying out in the mountains, that's for sure. Well, hold up now, what's this? Just looking around this debris here, and uh, <laughs> I noticed some movement. And it looks like stuck in this cage there's a, a green tree frog. Well, aren't you adorable? Well, I'm gonna tell you what, I can't leave this poor bastard out here drying out in the sun, so I'm gonna snag him up, and we'll put it in my backpack. Uh, Samir, looks like we have a new companion. Isn't that exciting? Just uh, gonna have to try to keep them separate, I think. Don't want the frog trying to make a snack out of Samir. <laughs> Although I don't think it'll be a problem. But now the important question. What do we name you? How about Ushix? Yes, I do like that. Welcome to the team, buddy. Just make sure to not eat Samir, please. It would devastate me so. Anywho, standing here outside a closed fortress. Uh, it is early in the morning, but I am quite drowsy, hungry, and thirsty. And you know, I'll tell you what, we could make camp here, but I think we should just move on. Why would we camp out here in this disgusting corpse-strewn battlefield when it's first thing in the morning and we could easily make it to another Dwarven Hillix? A place more hospitable. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's hit the road and see if we can't find a better place to make camp. Alright, this place looks a bit more promising, I'd say. Copper blazes, a Dwarven Hillix, and there are no corpses or locked gates anywhere to be seen. Just wonderful. Looks like we have a tavern here, very interesting. An unknown creature had the humid balls and copper blazes. I don't care one way or another. Uh, why, yes, yes I do. Um, realizing now that I'm holding the thing in my hand. We'll put it in my backpack, you didn't see a thing, did you? No, I don't think so, don't worry about it. Anywho, this looks like a fine tavern. Sparsely furnished, yes, but certainly better than that other dwarven fortress. And you know what, we might actually even be able to sleep in here. Just hoping these dwarves are drunk enough to not care about a kobold sleeping in the corner. And from the sounds of it, they are. Can I help you with something? Oh, uh, uh, hmm. I guess I can't sleep here. That's right, get moving, you scamp. Well, that's a shame. But nothing we're not used to. It's fine. I guess we'll just try to catch some Zs out here. Okay, well, it is next morning. We had a fairly restful sleep, but I am still drowsy, and I'm willing to bet it's because we had to spend an entire night up in the mountains. Still got some catching up to do on our sleep schedule. 
and I would love to continue sleeping, but at this point I'm all out of food, and I really don't want to risk getting too hungry, so I think we should move on. Now I had another look at our map, and remember our next goal is over the beak of land once more here to the northeast, except this time I think it'll be a longer journey, which is a little terrifying. So we're not going to want to go unless we're well stocked on food, and so I'm thinking we head down this way here. We have a few more dwarven hillocks, so we'll be safe at night anyways, but then farther down here to the southeast, we actually do have some human settlements. There's a hamlet called Healer Walked, and another named Night Image. Oh, and you know what? Actually, I just noticed right here, there's a forest we could pass through instead of going over the mountains again. That would be an excellent idea. It's called the Forest of Slaughter, which does not bode well, but hell, I'm willing to risk it. Anything to avoid going over those damn mountains again. That was a nightmare. All right, so it's settled. Today we look for some more food, water, and head to the Eastern Dwarven Hillocks. Rag Clan's the name. And there we'll spend the night. Samir, Ushix, how you two doing? Ready to go? Let's do it. We departed in high spirits the following morning, following the road for the most part southeast of Copper Blazes. Around noon, we were able to spot a small group of capybara, one of which I was able to successfully hunt. Getting food was no longer a problem for the time being. After the hunt, we continued on our way towards Rag Clan, a typical dwarven hillix. We made camp there and spent the night, continuing on once more the next morning. The following day, we had a long trip ahead of us, but it was a trip made easier by the enormous river we were able to follow. I don't think I've ever seen a river so wide. Remarkable. It led us to Healer Walked, a small but hospitable human hamlet. No stores or taverns, and so we quickly made camp, spent the night, and the next morning we were off once again, following the river as we made our way towards Night Image. We ran into a slight problem as we approached the hamlet, however, as it was on the opposite side of the river, and night was drawing near. Luckily, it's late enough in the year where the river ended up freezing, and we were able to successfully cross before nightfall. A lucky break. However, upon entering Night Image, we found the village abandoned. It stood as a collection of tiny ruined houses up on a hill. But, lucky once more, there was a nearby mead hall, in which we were able to take refuge. There was an elf inside, but they gave us no trouble. We spent the night in peace, eating capybara, as I practiced my crossbow skills. Ushix, Samir, and I were able to get plenty of rest, and we would need it, because on the morrow, the longest stretch of our journey would begin. Alright, well, it is the next morning. It was a restful night of sleep, and the hope is that we'll reach human lands before very long at all. It is a big stretch, but as long as we keep moving, it shouldn't be too bad. Just wish I wasn't so terribly over-encumbered. Makes things so much more difficult. <laughs> we are surrounded by incessant cackling. And that can only mean one thing. Boogeyman. Really one of the worst things an adventurer like Tuco could ever face. Things just got very serious. Alright, well first things first, I don't see any of them around me just yet. And before we do, I'm gonna start dropping items. Everything. And just like that. And now we're going to start sprinting. Northward. Oh, I can see him now. Just behind us. Looks to be two of them. One of which appears to be a small three-eyed humanoid with a pair of spindly antenna. It hurls vicious insults constantly, and its charcoal skin is leathery. The other one looks very different. It's small and scaly, with a short trunk, but it too hurls vicious insults constantly. Its charcoal scales are large and set far apart. Now we will know why we fear the night. Or rather, I guess I kind of already knew. Alright, let's do this. Continuing northward. And there's another down here. A small humanoid with lidless eyes. It has a stubby tail and it too hurls vicious insults constantly. Its black skin is wrinkled. Alrighty. Continuing to the north, with a horde of boogeymen right on my tail. These things are super fast, and as night creatures, they will not get tired. Still trying to get up to speed here. Getting close. There we go, but I am not outrunning these things. In fact, this one here is swinging at me. Damn it, alright, um... I guess I'm just gonna try to break line of sight like I did with those yetis. We'll go over here by this hilly area. I am starting to get tired, and so I'm going to slow down rapidly at this point. The beetle does not love you. Ooh, right there. A boogeyman just kicked me in the right foot with its left foot. Bruised the muscle. 
which isn't bad, but the force twisted my right ankle. Really hoping that doesn't slow me down too much. Continuing on, just around this ridge area. I'm not gonna be able to get much farther. And I don't know if this is smart at all, probably not, but I'm gonna crouch down right here and I'm gonna try sneaking. I don't know if that's possible, but it's gotta be worth a try, right? I can't outrun these things. All right, um, hunkered down here. It's pretty quiet. They don't look to be following me. I can't see any anywhere, surprisingly. Oh, but I just heard something down to my southeast. Come on. Oh, hi. Sprinting. Guess I'm gonna climb back up over here. I was punched by a boogeyman in my left lower leg, twisting my knee and bruising the muscle. Come on, Tuco, we have to do this. It's worked in the past, let's try it again. I'm going to jump just up over here, down the side of this ridge, and sprinting in a straight line. Uh, never mind. I'm gonna try to weave around these trees. Maybe if I can get in a position where I can sneak again, maybe I can lose them, I don't know. There's not many places to hide. Up over here, maybe? Oh no, they're right behind me. I'm tired again. This is not looking good. Coward. Coward. Oh my god, that was that was inc that was incredibly intense right there. Incredibly intense. But it looks like we made it. Thank you, Slus. Seriously, that was terrible right there. <laughs> I didn't think there was any way I could make that. <sighs> Looking down to the southwest, you can see some smoke caused by the boogeyman vanishing. Quite a lot of smoke, actually. Well, that was terrifying. Utterly terrifying. And you know, I'm not too sure if more than one group of boogeymen can show up in a night, but assuming they can't, then I think we should be good. We could definitely make it to that human settlement before tomorrow night, so that shouldn't be a worry. Although I am still pretty concerned about running into more boogeymen. Well, I'll tell you what, just standing around's not gonna get us anywhere, so let's get a move on. And you know what? Call me risky, but I wanna go see if I can get my bolts back. I had dropped them when those boogeymen first showed up. Let's hope for the best. Well, what do you say to that? A town. And this one looks very lively as well. It's named Big Scar, and is controlled by humans. Ushix Samir? I don't want to get too overexcited, but wow, this place really shows some promise. And would you look at that? We have an Honest to Isla's Tavern, the Chocolate Spices. Finally! Let's go, you two. First drinks on me. Oh, and it's empty. Of course. I don't know what I expected. Pfft, but who cares? This place is great. In fact, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna get myself a goblet here. And how about we treat ourselves to a drink? There we go. Strawberry wine. That will certainly do the trick. <sighs> I'll tell you, after a trip like that, it does a body good to be in such civilized accommodations once again. <sighs> okay. Well, there, uh, there's nobody here yet. And we have already helped ourselves to some drink. So how about we help ourselves to a bedroom as well? It couldn't hurt anything. I'm just a tiny kobold after all. And I am extremely tired. Let's go, you two. We'll pick this room right here. I don't think it'll hurt that much. Yeah, that bed looks very nice right now. Let's have ourselves a well-deserved rest. Now that Tuko, Samir, and new companion Ushix have found a place to call home, or so they think anyways, what will come next for the trio? Will they discover some dastardly happenings in town? Or perhaps they'll catch wind of a mighty quest to be undertaken. Who's to say? One thing can be said for certain, however. The trio has well earned its rest, and whatever is next to come will be faced with bright eyes and fresh minds. Well, you bearded bastards, gonna cut things here. No sense in getting into trouble quite yet. I thank you for joining me today, and I certainly hope you'll be joining me next time as well, here in Tar N, the land of legends, where we will once again be following along with Tuka Wimiditni. Jungle Jump. And until then, my bearded bastards...